All right, so also, important note for you, this is the last lesson that we're going to cover. So then after today, we'll start reviewing for our test and plan on taking it on Monday. So it will be with the grade book? That's the goal. That's the goal. Okay. All right, so... First off, to graph the line, that's in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, so the b is negative 1, so I would go down to 1 and put a dot. That white marker is not going to work as good on this paper. So I'll go down to 1 and put a dot. Then from there, its slope is 2 thirds, so I would rise 2 and run 3. Is that 3? 1, 2, 3, yep. And that's it, that's your line. Okay, everybody good? Now, what if, I'm going to delete that line off and I'm going to change the problem. I still want to leave those points up there though, because we're still going to use those points. This is going with today's lesson now. What if, where's the delete? There it is. All right. What if I took that equal sign out right there and put in a less than sign? Okay, so first off, you're still going to graph it the same way. It's mx plus b form, so you go down to 1, put a dot, and then you rise 2, run 3. Now, less than. Here's some things we will have to know. If it's a less than or a greater than, the line that you graph will be dashed. If it's less than equal to, greater than equal to, the line you graph will be solid. Okay, so this one's going to have a dashed line that goes through my points. I think I picked it up on the line, it's not going on. Yep. Oh, it wasn't a line. <laughs> I thought it was going to, that's kind of straight for me. Okay. Wait, what did you change it for? Oh. Now. Last piece to this is going to be where we shade. Okay, do you remember when you shaded on a number line? Well, it's the same thing. We're going to have shading on these lines. So we got to figure out now if we're supposed to do a shade above our dash line or below our dash line. Common sense on this would say it's less than. So less than, you'd probably shade below it. And that's a pretty good guess, and that's probably going to be right here. But what you can do to always know for sure is plug in a test point. Okay, so I'm going to pick my favorite test point is 0, 0 right there. And I can use 0, 0 for a test point anytime as long as my line don't touch it. Okay, so that's 0x, zero 0y. Zero so I'm going to plug those in and see if that makes it a true statement or not. So that says 0 is less than 0 minus 1. Okay, so is that a good statement or a true statement? A good or a bad? Is 0 smaller than negative 1? No. no, zero is not smaller than negative one. So that means where that point is, it didn't make my sentence true, so it can't be shaded. So if I can't shade that point, that tells me I would have to shade the other side of the line. So your answer, this is where we get to do a lot of scribbling. Don't go tell that art teacher. Your answer is going to be everything underneath that line. So think about what we've been doing with systems. So what you're going to see this grow into is a line with a blob shaded, another line with a blob shaded. So when it was just a line, our answer was where the points intersected. Now when it's shaded blobs, our answer is going to be where the shaded blobs intersect. That's some good math terms there, the shaded blobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got with the nail that one ready to look at them. Good, good, good in the math hood. So that one just for white is less than? Yes, dude. Well, less than, so we shaded below it, yes. Okay, so maybe we've got two of them on there now. A system. They get white paper for my graph paper to show up. Let's look here at y is less than or equal 
two, two thir negative two thirds x minus one, and y is greater than or equal to a half x minus eight. Okay, so what we're going to do on something like this is break it down into what we just did in the last problem. We're going to graph this one, figure out what gets shaded on it. Then we'll graph this one, figure out what gets shaded on it. And our answer will be any place where the two shadings overlap. All right. So on that first line, I'm going to do it. Let me, I can color code a little bit. That might help. We'll do this one in red. Where does it cross the y-axis? What's its B? Negative one, good job, sir, Riley. So I go down to one and put a dot. Okay, then from that dot, its slope is negative two thirds. So what do I do from that dot? Go down two and down two and what? Three. Which way over? Negative. Nope, because that would be a negative and a negative, which oh. would make a positive. So if I want to go down two with Kira, I can do that. Down one, two, but then I would go right three, or I could have went up two and left three. Remember that? Only go negative one of the ways. Okay, let's go up there and look at the sign because we need to know if this line is solid or dashed. It's got the equal to bar underneath it. So that means it's going to be a solid line. Remember that? Everybody okay on that? All right, so now we just got to figure out where we get to shade. Um, says less than, so my betting side of me says that's probably going to be here, and you would probably be right if you put that, but we're going to get to some at, at times where it's more complicated, so better safe than sorry, I'm always going to do a test point. So my line's not touching zero, zero, so I'm going to plug zero, zero in. I'm going to say zero is less than or equal to negative two-thirds times zero minus one which is the same sentence I had earlier, zero, smaller, or equal to negative one. It's not a trick. So if zero is equal to around your B? No. Is this a true statement? No. Okay, that's not true, so that means zero can't get colored in, so I color on the other side where zero, zero is not. So I will, like we guessed, shade below. Butimus, butimus. You all right? Why would we shade above? If zero, zero had made that a true statement, and on the obvious ones, it would have been a greater than, like we're fixing to see on this next one. All right, I'm going to put a blue dot by this next one. Use a blue marker on it. i got to go down to eight for its y-intercept, and I'm speeding right through graphing those because you should be pretty good at graphing uh, MX plus B line, right? So I'm going to go down to 8. You good, Kinley Lou? Um, yeah. Right One, two, three. It's hard to see through my scribbling. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Way down here is my negative 8. Then let me, I forgot its slope. What was it? One half. So I'm going to rise from that dot. Rise 1, run 2. Okay. Does this line need to be solid or dashed? Yeah. Solid, because it's got the equal line underneath it. It's solid. So, there that line goes. Now, probably, pretty good guess that I'm going to shade above it because it said greater than, right? But I'm still going to pick that zero, zero and plug it in and check. So let's go plug zero, zero in and double check just to be better safe than sorry. So one half times zero is nothing. So that's a true statement. See how it looks when it's a true statement? Zero is bigger than negative eight. So zero, zero does get colored. And zero, zero is above that line. So here's my line. I'm going to shade everything above it. Okay, now look at this beautiful stuff that we have there. You didn't know it, but red and blue is going to make yellow highlighter. 
where we have red and blue overlap is our answer. I don't overlap. Well, what did you do different? I guess if they would have kept going. Yeah, extend them enough to make them. Because remember, a line keeps going forever. So this is what's real hard for people to understand. They're like, well, what's the answer? That big yellow blob. I know. I'm always like, listen about the art teacher for this lesson. Is it really? Yeah, that big yellow blob is the answer. So this yellow blob? Uh-huh. Oh. But you don't can't just write ye yellow blob. It's got to be that graph. Oh, I can right. see y'all on a test right. Why yellow, yellow uh -huh. blob? Yeah. So your answer is just the graph? The, yes. Yes. All right, so, you okay on that one? Let's try another one. Great idea, thanks. Jeez Louise. Don't these people know I'm trying to educate you? Do you own any graph paper at the moment? Do I own any graph paper? Are you kidding me? Can I borrow a piece? Yes, it's in that blue, that blue binder. Um, talk on that, I couldn't think of anything. Uh, <laughs> That sounds good. <laughs> That's so funny mm -hmm. because as the phone started ringing, it's in that blue, blue spiral, sweetie. As oh. the phone started ringing, I was right by him, and I said, "Do these people not know I'm trying to teach you?" And he's sitting here eating talkies. So yes. Uh huh. No, he's eating talkies at the Taco Hut. All right, he's got them all on his fingers, you know, like Cheeto fingers. So make sure you give him a high five. All right. The students would like to see you. I guess you couldn't figure out who we were talking about. <laughs> I don't even know where we're going. Oh, no, it's in the main hallway Talk across from the office. this time is not started in slope intercept form. I know, sometimes I just got to throw the Miss Nice one away and pull out my mean girl britches. greater than 1, and then we got x plus 4y is greater than 20. So here are your options, and this is what you'll have to decide how you would do it on a test. Do you want to solve them for y and make them slope intercept form? That's great. Or do you want to plug in zeros and graph the intercepts? That's great. Doesn't matter. What would you do? How would you start? Don't everybody talk at once. Where do you put it in what? Just kidding. It, never mind. I think you were about to say something good, so have some confidence. But I don't. The Y intercept. Well, yeah. I was so like, you put it in, like, why is it y equals MX plus Okay, so how would I start that on this first one? Minus the X. Okay, so that would give me negative Y is greater than negative X plus 1. Now what? Divide by negative 1. And what happens to our inequality sign when you multiply or divide by a negative? It flips. Flips. Good. Makes that a positive x and a negative 1. So very good. Not difficult to do that. You can do that. Great. Y intercepts negative 1. So I go down to 1 and put a dot. From there, what's the slope? What's the number in front of the x? One. There's no number, it's understood one. So from this dot, I rise one, run one. Do I need to connect this line with a solid line or a dashed line? Dashed. Dashed, fabuloso. Why is it dashed? Because it doesn't have the equal bar underneath it. Wait, wait, can you go back to your graph? Uh-huh. Okay. Oh. I bet this is why it's not, I need to pick it here. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're cooking with. Look at that. 
pretty dang slime. Okay, so tricky on this one now. This is what I was talking about, how sometimes it gets tricky about deciding where to shade. Because my original inequality over here said greater than, but now we rewrote it that said less than, so that might confuse some people. So that's when I'm going to plug my zero, zero point in to make sure. And you can plug it in either one of them. If I plug it in here, zero is less than zero minus one. So is zero less than negative one? No. No, so don't shade right here where zero, zero is, which means you've got to shade below it. I'm not understanding that. Well, let me see if I can assist. I shall try. Come on, scoot up because I need to shade some more. Oh, shoot. There we go. All right. So you can pick, Kinley, any number on this graph to be your test point as long as it's not touching your line. Any one you want. I just like zero, zero because zeros you can do in your head. So I pick this point and I plug it into my inequality, my problem. If it makes the inequality a true statement, that means that point is part of the shading like, block. Like some statement, like zero equals zero. Right, zero equals zero, or zero is greater than negative one, or zero is, you know, something that's true. Oh, oh, oh. So if that makes it true, then that point would be part of my shaded block. If it doesn't make it true, if it's stupid, then that point can't be shaded, so you shade the other side of the line. So, but if it is true, you shade above uh -huh. it, and if it ain't, if it is true, you shave where the point is. Because the line could have been up here, and the point could have been below it. Depends on where the line is, on if it's above Are or below. Are we going to do a problem like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so everybody good with the first line? Let's go check out my second one up there. I'll get my blue pen out for it. Uh, what would we do first here? You would um, put it like we did the Subtract other one. the x. Subtract the x. Thank you, sir. So 4y is greater than negative x plus 20. Divide by 4. Add a kid, sir, talent. Now, when we divide everything by 4, that gives me y is greater than. So that negative x divided by 4, that's like negative 1 fourth x. I didn't save enough room. 20 divided by 4. It's five. plus five. I'm going to drop that plus five down. That looks stupid, but you get it. All right, so plus five, go from the origin up to five. Put you a dot. Then from there, my slope is negative one-fourth. So that's what Kira was talking about earlier. Just go negative one of the ways. So to make it jive up with my other section, I'm going to go down one and right four. Now, is that line going to get connected with a solid or dashed? Dashed. Dashed. You got it. You got it. Oh, my big. Okay. What, what the heck? What? What's the matter? What's the matter? What's the matter? Nothing. Okay. So, zero, zero. I'm going to test zero, zero, which look where zero, zero is in a in relationship to that line, Kinley, zero, zero is below that line, right? So if zero, zero makes it true, I'll shade below it. If zero, zero makes it false, I'll shade above it. So zero is greater than negative one-fourth times zero is zero plus five. Is zero greater than five? No. No, so I can't shade zero, zero, so I can't shade below. So I have to shade above. Whoops, I got a got below it a little bit. So I don't have a huge overlapping section there. But look what the magic yellow will do if we were to extend those lines. Wouldn't it be all of this? You can see what? Oh, when I plug the zero, zero in, it said zero is greater than five. Me and my handwriting being messy. He makes it feel like I'm an old woman now. Get over it. It's messy. Why would you go like 
Because zero was not greater than five, so zero zero made this made this line false, so you couldn't color zero zero. All right, so the real fun is going to be on this next problem, and don't worry, you don't have to do threes or anything with this, but it's going to be when it comes from a word problem. So let's get a word problem taken care of. Yeah, I'm down here where we get. We still got a lot of time, but we're on short period. I got to remember. Format page, make it be. Which page there is? Make it be white. So I'm going to read us through the word problem and we'll make some notes. Greg needs at least $1.60 in stamps. So let's pause and talk about the word at least. You've got words that mean an inequality, at least, at most, all those things. So if you've got to have at least $1.60, can you have $1.60? Yes. yes. If you need at least $1.60, can you have $1.50? No. No. So it's got to be greater than or equal to if you need at least, right? So it says Greg needs at least $1.60 in stamps to mail the package. He has 28 cents and 4 cents stamps. He can use no more than 24 cents stamps. So I'm going to name my 28 cents stamps my X. So X is going to be 28. This is just like we did before. Y will be my 4 cents stamps. So it says he needed at least a dollar sixty in stamps. So however many twenty-eight cent stamps he has, plus however many four cent stamps he has, has to be at least. Did you catch that sign? At least a dollar sixty. Okay. If you would comment on assignment number five, what about me? If what? says he can use no more than so no more than so what sign will no more than be yes so I'm going to have a less than equal sign so what is it he can use no more than he can use no more than 20 of the four cent stamps four cent stamps was why no more than 20 okay so even though We've got, we wrote it from a word problem, we're going to do the same thing, so we're going to graph them, and then where, that, where they overlap will be his options for buying stamps. Now, um, Y, this is, Y is less than or equal to 20. This is a horizontal line because there's no X, so it would go up to 20 and be a horizontal line, so I'm not going to count by 20s. Let me count on the red lines by 5s and see if that'll work. 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay, so I'll be a horizontal line through there. Uh, will it be solid or dashed? Solid. You got it. You got it. Now I'm, this this is money and stamps, so I'm only going to be in the positives, right? I don't have to extend that over there. I think it's going to be in quadrant one. How far did you go up? To twenty, but I counted five, ten, fifteen, twenty. All right, now. Um, less than, this is a horizontal line. You can plug in a test point if you want to, but this is dummy proof. A horizontal line, if you're less than it, you got to be below it. So we're everything in here, right? I'm going to write over here that that's 20, so I'll know I counted by five. You can, but you don't have to. Either way is all right. Okay, so now for our other line. That point 28x plus 0.04y. How you want to start trying to graph it? We did the easy one first. So how are we going to do this one? When you get rid of the 0.28x. Okay, so Kinley's putting in slope intercept form again. So that'll give us 0.04y is greater than or equal to negative 0.28x. 
plus 1.6. Okay, now what would we need to do? Divide yeah, about everything by 0.04. So I'm dividing by positive, so I don't have to flip my sign. What is negative 0.28 divided by 0.04? Negative 7, very good. What is 1.6 divided by 0.04? Nope. Nope. What is it? 1.6 divided by 0.04? Nope. Nope. That would be 40. That would be 40. Alright, so it's going to cross the y-axis at 40. Well, I'm already up at 20 on my other line, so I counted by 5, so this will be 25. Mine's just going to, I'm just going to put it up at the top. I don't have enough spaces. Then from there, I'm going to go down 7. So 5 and a little bit, and over 1. Is that line going to be solid or dashed? Solid, because it's got the equal line underneath it. So it'll be going like this. Remember, it's money, so stay in quadrant one. Now i just got to figure out if I'm going to be shading on the left or the right of it. So I am going to throw my zero, zero in over here. It is zero, seven times zero is zero. Is zero greater than or equal to 40? No. No, zero is not bigger than 40, so I can't color zero, zero, so I color on the other side. And then my answer for, did this person have a name, Greg? My answer for Greg for what stamp arrangement he can use is everywhere where I had red and blue. So we could look in that yellow blob now and find an answer to tell Greg something. Let's see, let me get my marker back. So to, to get to... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten on the X, ten was my twenty-eight cent stamps. So he could buy, for example, ten twenty-eight cent stamps and then move up here somewhere, uh, ten four cent stamps. That would keep him in the safe area. So any of the ordered pair in that yellow blob would keep him in his safe area for not spending more than $1.60 and not using more than 20 of those four cent stamps. Stamps, that's cheap. Stamp prices are like more than 50 cents now, I think. Per stamp? Yeah. Oh, you know what I remember? I do, and it sucks. Well, I stopped doing it, pay my bills online, I guess. Uh, okay. So, just not always sure about this lesson because of the scribbling that always makes, you know, everybody likes, except for me, everybody likes to be nice and neat and have everything organized, and now all of a sudden we're scribbling and making blocks. So that makes students uneasy sometimes, but there's not going to be a ton of these. The majority, the stuff that's the most important to me out of this unit is the stuff you took a quiz over yesterday. So that's the, the gist of it. So tomorrow I'm going to give you a study guide and then Friday we'll do like we did last time, go over what we need to, we won't go over, I'm looking at the study guide right now, there's 37 questions on the study guide, so we won't have time to go over all of them, but we'll make sure we go over some of each type, so you've got more notes on everything of each type. And then Monday we'll knock out the El Testo, sound like plans, Sam? Not really, but I guess. Come on, Kelly. You can do it. When would you like to? Well, I have to take, uh, are we done for the day? Mm -hmm. That's really big.